I'm no longer comfortable staying silent about the things that have happened to me. And although this may come as a shock to many of you in this community, this is a reality that I have been living in for years. And I can no longer stand to not tell the story of what has profoundly affected my life in all of the events that we have alleged in our complaint. I met Luke Walton about 10 years ago at a volleyball tournament. I had known his wife for many years as we competed against each other playing volleyball. And during that time, would see them both at volleyball events throughout Los Angeles. And in 2013, Luke started working with me at Time Warner at the time, while I was covering the Lakers, and he became one of our analysts. And during this time, he became a mentor and a friend and someone that I looked up to. And I was writing a book about athletes transitioning out of sports and into the real world. And I felt that, based on our conversations, he would be the candidate to write the forward for the book. And I asked him as my friend and colleague if he would be willing to do that, and he graciously agreed to do it. We met a few times over lunch to discuss what the forward would entail, what I needed, his thoughts on the book in general, to get his input. And I was very grateful to be able to spend this time and have him involved in a project that meant so much to me, in my experience, as well as something that he was incredibly passionate about as well. Once the book came out, he was already with the Warriors. And as, as it came out, I decided I wanted to give the book to anyone that had contributed as a gift. And I reached out to him knowing that he would be in town with the Warriors to play the Lakers in Los Angeles. And I asked him if we could meet up so I could give him the book personally, and he agreed. He said I could swing by his hotel and drop it off. So I did that. I stopped by his hotel, and I had the book wrapped in gift wrapping. And as I pulled up to the hotel, he waited for me outside. I got out and handed him the book, and we hugged, and he was so excited about it and was so happy to see me and asked me to park my car, car across the street because we hadn't seen each other in quite a while. He wanted to catch up and hear how things were going with the book. I agreed. I parked my car across the street, and as I walked into the hotel with him, I anticipated us walking into the lobby where we would hang out and catch up. And he started to walk towards the elevators. And I asked him where we were going. And he said, up to his room. And I asked him why we were going up to his room. And he said, because the players on his team were in the lobby and he could not be around them. He didn't want to be seen in the lobby with the players. So. I was hesitant, and he said, don't worry about it, it's me. And as someone that I trusted for a long time, I realized I shouldn't overthink it and follow his lead. <clears throat> I walked up to the hotel with him and continued to tell myself not to overthink it and that I could trust him. Out of nowhere, he got on top of me and pinned me down to the bed and held my arms down with all of his weight while he kissed my neck and my face and my chest. And as I kept asking him to please stop and to get off, he laughed at me. I continued to ask him to stop over and over again without any use of my arms because he continued to hold me down I could feel him rubbing his erection on me. And he continued to laugh at all of my pleas to get off and to stop. I thought he was going to rape me. I finally was able to get up after what felt like forever. And I immediately jumped up to leave the room, and he came around and grabbed me from behind, and again held my arms down so I could not move, and started kissing my neck again. I kept 
begging him to please let go and to please stop, and he continued to laugh in my ear. He finally let me go, and I got out of the room. I was grateful that he was not in Los Angeles and that I wouldn't have to interact with him after this. But everything changed in 2016 when he joined the Lakers. I was on the board of a charity and putting together a charity event, and it was my job to get Luke Walton as our guest honoree. When he showed up to the event, I walked out to his car to show him where to park. As soon as I walked up to the driver's side window, he looked me up and down slowly and started making noise of the same thing. Mm, you're killing me and not that. And every feeling I had from that first experience of feeling disgusted and betrayed came back. He parked his car and walked in to the building with me. And right before we walked in, he hugged me and pressed his body against me and kissed me on the cheek. I felt disgusting. And I couldn't believe that he, knowing what he had already done to me, willingly touched me in that way. I had to moderate a panel with him and talk about how amazing he was for an hour. And it literally killed me. I was now full-time covering the Lakers, which meant I had to go to practices and games weekly. So my interactions with him increased. And every time I showed up to practice or games, he would be sure to hug me and kiss me on the cheek in a scrum of this size with many people around. And I couldn't do anything. I pretended to be completely normal this entire time. And I felt like I had nowhere to turn. <coughs> as I've talked about already, as we have alleged this complaint, every interaction with him that I had over that time made me incredibly uncomfortable and feel unsafe. This type of behavior cannot be condoned. And no woman should ever be made to feel like a victim. I appreciate you all being here today and looking forward to getting this off my chest and being able to heal and also hoping that he learns a lesson.